these are my knees. Until December 2018, they had never failed me. It was then that my knee pain started, both knees. It would be hard to walk, let alone do exercise. Up until then, I was the fittest I had ever been. I would try to do exercise for a few days. It would feel good for a few days, and then inevitably I'd end up feeling like crap. This vicious cycle continued with some longer moments in between where I actually felt good doing exercise. This made me deeply frustrated. I felt like I was in an elderly person's body. My relationship with my body became strained. Exercise, exercise was my outlet and I was unable to use it to channel my negative energies for a few months. It was bad enough where after almost every single workout, I would be in pain and crying. It was a few months ago where I kind of stopped trying. I didn't forget about exercise, but I would have maybe two to three very low intensity sessions per week and I could feel myself getting weaker. It no longer worried me as much, but I knew the problem was still there. I was back at the fitness level of my 12 year old self whose exercise consisted solely of book bench press. That is when my PT came into my life. Cue the angelic music. Oh. By chance, my dad struck up a conversation with him at the gym and my dad scored his contact. My parents and I wanted to take me to a PT, but they never knew who to take me to. Now give me a second because I'm going to briefly go on a tangent about how messed up PR's physical therapy system is. I'm the physical therapy system in Puerto Rico and I have to get a reference from another doctor to be able to go to a physical therapist, which is kind of counterintuitive because you can go to other doctors with less studies than them without needing a reference. Also sometimes people with physical therapy associates degrees, which have less studies than the actual physical therapists to have doctorates, get more opportunities, and also sometimes falsely market themselves as being physical therapists with a doctorate, which is illegal, but that law isn't really enforced. So my parents didn't want to take me to someone who took part in all of this. My first appointment was the 20th of February. Now it is a month and five days since my first appointment. Woo! <laughs> he did a lengthy evaluation of which I do not have footage, but I can do a recreation. <laughs> He diagnosed me with knee instability and a tiny bit of valgus in my left knee, which basically just means that my knee tends to go inwards instead of staying out like it's supposed to during movements like squats. I would have never noticed this instability or valgus if I hadn't been put in front of a mirror. You might think you're doing an exercise well, but unless you're in front of a mirror and you're checking your own form, or you have a professional to check your form, there's no way to know for sure. So if you're starting out with exercise and you have the option to do exercise in a place that has mirrors, then take it. Your spine has to be very neutral when doing exercises. I already knew this, but I didn't think your spine has to be as tucked in as it does. Often, especially with Instagram glorifying the bootay, you'll see women especially um, kind of sticking their butt out a little bit or in more technical terms, doing exercises with a posterior pelvic tilt, like they're preparing to throw it back. I hope none of my neighbors is currently looking in through that glass window. You see that? That's incorrect form right there. It might be less exaggerated than what I'm doing, maybe something like this which is still wrong because it has to be something like this. See? Completely straight. And then that's how you're gonna do movements like your squats and your lunges. You'll see that my proper position for doing exercises is a lot less bootylicious. But you could run into some problems if you continue to do your regular bootylicious squatting or lunging or any exercise that requires in neutral spine, which is almost every single exercise. On that note, Dayla Loves Dumbbells has an amazing series on form on her Instagram, which I highly recommend. For some of y'all, this might be surprising, but 
my PT told me not to stretch out my legs or at least not to put an emphasis on it unless that was already a part of my routine. He told me that there is a very big misconception that stretching out a muscle solves all your problems like the seven day vegan challenge. Seven day vegan challenge, baby, solves all your problems. But the truth is it might worsen them because by stretching, what you're doing is you're lengthening out the muscle and relaxing it. And if it's a muscle that needs to be strengthened for your injury to heal, then you're just making the problem much worse because it's easier to injure. He didn't assign me any stretches, just exercises. Among those were If you're recovering from injury, that tends to be the general recommendation, like slow and controlled movements that build up strength in a Pilates-like fashion. Obviously that's not for all cases, but from my experience and my friend's experiences who've had injuries, that is the general advice. As I progressed into more difficult exercises and I spent more time with my PT, I started to see a running theme. From what he told me, a lot of injuries are born out of gluten core weakness. He even explained to me that, you know, the stereotypical old person posture that is born out of a shortening in some of the muscles in the front of the leg and glute weakness. If you tell an older person to try and get out of that stance, they will probably not be able to. But according to my PT, if you tell them to activate their glutes, then they're able to get out of that posture much easier. Ultimately, glute inactivation can lead to being bedridden. Fun. So when you're doing exercise and just in your daily life, make sure you're activating your glutes and that you keep them nice and strong. When you're doing exercise, make sure to activate the muscles that you're targeting, especially your core and glutes. This is my fifth and final lesson. Depending on your case, don't limit yourself. Obviously, some cases are different and require total rest. Whatever the case, you should proceed with caution and work with a professional so that you don't injure yourself further. But sometimes people will limit themselves. And instead of having one problem, the injury, they will have two problems, the injury and muscle weakness. Start out slow, progress patiently. And once again, return to the mirror, look at yourself, make sure you have the form down before you progress to higher resistance. My PT says that if you get pain during a workout, you should rate it on a scale of 1 to 10. If the pain is under 5, my PT recommends that you repeat the exercise and check if it is a form issue. If the pain persists, then just stop. If it's 5 or above, then you have to just stop. Don't test it again. Don't try anything. Stop. Make sure you're being careful when you repeat exercises if the pain is under 5. As of now, I have progressed quite a bit. I no longer look like jello when doing my PT exercises. Overall, the experience with my PT has been incredibly positive. After a few weeks with him, he also formally diagnosed me with a tiny bit of bursitis in my pes and zurinus. But even if that means that the problem is worse than we thought it was, it is comforting to actually know what has been going on with me for this past year. Besides, it's improved a lot in the last few visits. My PT told me that I'm in the clear to do whatever I please when it comes to exercise, so long as I follow his guidelines. So I've been doing exercise more consistently these past few days, especially with the quarantine that makes it easier for me to do exercise. The quarantine is another topic. I'll touch on all of this in more detail in my next episode of this series. Hopefully this was informative and y'all enjoyed. If you liked, drop a like down below. If you really liked and you'd like to see more where this came from, then subscribe, comment if your heart desires, and I will see you next time. Bye.